All right, my friends, it is the top of the hour. My name is Lynn Wilson. I am a business development manager for Hurtudet Norway, but I also like to say that I am part of the Cruise Norway team. Uh, Espen Fjermerus uh, took me under his wing for several years. He is the owner and founder of Cruise Norway. Um, and we are here today to talk about all things Hurtudet Norway. And we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper focus into Northern Lights and some some nifty offerings that we have. So I would encourage you to stay on until the very end because uh, you are getting the sneak peek of offers that have not been launched yet. But before I delve into that, I just have to shine a spotlight on our amazing Cruise Norway team. Fun fact, Cruise Norway is one of her Hurtudetn's longest running partners spanning back decades. And the vast majority of the existing Cruise Norway team, there is a lot of crossover between Hurtudetn and Cruise Norway. So the vast majority of the team are former Hurtudetn staffers. And there's a couple of powerhouse women over there, Mari Perrin and Anne Tal. They trained me when I started with Hurtudetn back in 2016. I've uh, worked with others as a travel advisor selling in. So the amount of Hurtudetn know-how within the Cruise Norway team is astounding. Please make sure you're requesting quotations. They are experts on all things Hurtudetn and all things expedition too. So while we're talking about the Hurtudetn Norway brand today, don't hesitate to reach out for any of your adventure travel needs. We have a very close relationship. I consider Cruise Norway my second family, and I really appreciate the opportunity to come back here and hopefully regale you with Hurtudet Norway. I think before we get into the products that we offer, it's very important to shed a light on our rich history because we did just celebrate our 130th anniversary along the coast in Norway. And if you are tuning in and you might be looking into a trip to Norway, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you probably want to experience the fjords. Fun fact, we have over 1,700 fjords along the coast of Norway. So that gives us amazing vistas. We all have waterfront properties, makes it quite logistically challenging to get from point A to point B without crossing at least some stretch of water. So back in the day, if you wanted to send mail from Trondheim up to the northern regions, it would take weeks. Packages would take months. So in 1891, the government um, floated out a contract to basically see if there were any uh, seafarers who were willing to take on a contract that would sail during the night. In comes Captain Richard Witt here, and he commandeered the DS Vestidolen, and we actually got our start by carrying mail from Trondheim up to Hammerfest, and what used to take weeks to months this man achieved in a matter of days, and I do have to drop a tagline here, Norwegians. You might call us rather literal people because Hurtudetn was born on this day, and Hurtudetn quite literally translates to the fast route. This is not a one-off literal thing. My maiden name is Uslein, and I may or may not be named after a gravel road in a small town called Landsvik, but the gravel road is called Uslein. So quite literal people. But we definitely established this sea link tying together the southern and the northern regions and we've never looked back. So since then, the route has extended now to encompass Bergen all the way up here to Hirkenes and then back down to Bergen. This is what we know as our mail route or the classic route. And it's very important when you're looking at this classic route, the intent was always that these would be working ships. The intent was that we would be a lifeline to the Norwegian coast, but we just also happen to have one of the most stunning coastlines in the world. So over the years, we just organically grew to accommodate more and more leisure travelers. So now we are more known kind of to be a bit of a cruise line now and uh, we did gain quite a bit of notoriety in 2011 when we mounted 11 cameras on the MS Nurnorge and we live streamed our entire journey from Bergen up to Hirkenes. So even now you can see a minute by minute documentary and I think it holds the 
the world record for longest live stream in case we're talking about accolades or what have you. If you're tuning in, maybe you have thought about Norway. So this is my opportunity to attempt to woo you and threaten you with a good time. So I hope the intro resonates that not only are you in great hands with the Cruise Norway team, but we've been sailing this route for 130 years. There is not a nook, a cranny, a fjord we have not explored extensively. That should resonate with you. 130 years of legacy. We are Norway flagged. We are so well known along the coast of Norway to provide that most authentically Norwegian experience. We are an industry leader in sustainability, which I'll speak to, and we also provide an amazing culinary experience. And I will just tell you, we do not wear tight clothing on culinary cruises. So let's go into the culinary aspect of things. And uh, we do source about 80% of our food locally from the uh, various ports of call from over 50 local producers. So with us, you're not just going to see Norway, you are going to taste Norway. And uh, this really translates into the sustainable element, fewer transportation miles, less energy use, as well as providing that regenerative experience or that circular economy. And it's not inconceivable to pick up King Crab in Holningsvog and Kirkenes and serve it that night. So keep in mind, we do provide an amazing culinary experience all up and down the Norwegian coastline. We do not have a dress code. Don't bring those tight clothes, just leave them at home. So in regards to the sustainability element here, a plastic free future, we were the first major adventure travel company across brands, Herkirut Norway and Herkirut Expeditions to ban all non-essential single use plastic. So it's very important to us to drive the narrative to operate as sustainably and as responsibly as possible. So that is one of our initiatives. We also have the Herkirut Foundation, this is a collaboration between us, our guests, our partners, and private donors. Its purpose is to fight climate change, strengthen these local communities, as well as stop unsustainable mass tourism. So we've supported over 50 projects in 13 different countries with over 5 million kroner. Um, what you're looking at here is called Guardians of the Kelp. So we have an initiative in place where we are restoring these underwater kelp forests because they're crucial for the biological diversity uh, and is considered one of the world's most productive habitats. So you don't see all of our efforts. A lot of our efforts are below sea level as well. You might ask, how do we come up with donations for the Hurtiruten Foundation? And we are big fans of small actions can collectively have a big impact. One of those initiatives is called our Green Stay Program. This is in place for Hurtiruten Norway, this is in place for her good and expeditions. And basically, just when you hang this tag on your door, you're telling us, don't worry about cleaning my stateroom. I'm OK. You are saving water. You are saving chemicals. And her Norway will donate five Norwegian kroner for every Green Stay night. Her and expeditions will donate 50 euro cents for every Green Stay night per guest. So in 2022, we had 183,000 green stay nights, and that translated to about 100,000 euros donated to the Hurtiruten Foundation to continue to fund these sustainable initiatives. Then we have a C0 initiative in place, and this is where we're aiming to build uh, the world's first zero emission vessel, or at least the first zero emission vessel for us. It's kind of a race to see who gets there first. Hopefully it's us, but we did also build the wor world's first hybrid powered vessels, the Rual Amundsen. Hot on the heels came Fritjof Nansen. Then we uh, invested about 100 million euros in reconfiguring our existing fleet to be more sustainable, hybrid powered, and uh, to reduce emissions. Emissions. So the zero emissions vessel hopefully will be done by 2030, but it will feature the large battery banks, retractable wind and solar sails, enhanced AI assisted maneuvering, underwater air lubrication, hydrodynamic retractable thrusters, as well as smart cabins with real time energy monitoring, I'm in sails. These are engineering points. So this is about the extent that I know, but suffice to say, the future is green and sustainability really does lie at the core of who we are. So thank you for listening to the intro. Today, we're here to talk about our 
Norway coastal itineraries. What I led with, that was that classic route, year-round operations, many ships operating departures every week. September through April, we have one ship, the MS Trollfjord. She runs the North Cape Express. Uh, not a ferry, does not carry uh, passengers port to port, so you will have longer port stays on the North Cape Express. And our summer Midnight Sun itinerary is the Svalbard Express. So what we're going to focus on today, however, will be the classic route and the North Cape Express, you know, differentiating the two um, itineraries. We will give an honorable mention to the Svalbard Express, but we're going to go a little bit harder in on the Northern Lights for this session. So let's start with the four classics. And again, that's that Richard Witt route from 1893. And we have many different ways to explore Norway. So when you're thinking Norway, everything we do is quite modular. So you can choose your cruise length. For example, the round trip here is Bergen, Hirkenes, Bergen. That's 12 days. 11 days, you can do a voyage of discovery and visit Norway's third largest city, Trondheim. And you can sail Bergen, Hirkenes, Trondheim. A, I like this itinerary because I'm biased. I'm from the Trondheim's region. I'm a Trunderjente. And um, I also think that you can package this with land. So you might want to fly into Oslo, our capital, spend a few days there. Hop on a train, very scenic route from Oslo to Bergen. And then after your voyage, why not take the train back down from Trondheim to Oslo? So that's just one way that you can explore the full coast. And there are 34 ports of call between Bergen and Kirkenes, and they call upon 33 ports sailing south. So before your immediate question should be, well, Lynn, why on earth would I go on a round trip voyage if you're only going to call upon the same ports? I have an answer. And that answer is that generally speaking, the ports we pass during the nighttime sailing north, we will hit these during the daytime sailing south. So if you do one of the longer classic voyages, you will have the opportunity to visit the highest number of ports during the daytime hours. So just keep that in mind. If we have any slaves to corporate America who just, you just don't have that kind of uh, vacation tuning in, that is okay. We are modular. You can also do a northbound, but again to Hirkenes. If you want to do southbound, you can do that as well. Hirkenes to Bergen, that is six days. Keep in mind for North Americans coming in and out of Bergen, it's logistically easier because Bergen is Norway's second largest city and there's more uh, flight connections going in and out of Bergen uh, and the ship departs in the evening. Whereas if you're going out of Hirkenes, no less impressive, but you should definitely plan on coming in a day early because the ship departs around noon and there's only a limited number of flights that go into this regional airport, Hirkenes. You might still have the question, well, Lynn, how, I still don't get it. How do you do 34 ports of call in seven days? I have an answer again. We do port stops 24-7. So that means we are making frequent stops. And this is something you need to keep in mind. If you are looking at this classic route, this is not a traditional cruise that you might be used to with half to full days in port. So some stops are 10 minutes. Some stops uh, are a few hours. In the winter, we have about a 10 hour stay in Olesund. But generally speaking, you're gonna have a few hours in port and I've highlighted those ports. And you could always, of course, get off if we're in one of the shorter stays, but we are very punctual, arguably as punctual as the Germans. So you definitely wanna make sure you are back in time. I mentioned that it was the most versatile um, itinerary. And by that, I mean, we have six ships that we sell in the North America market that operate the same itinerary year round. If you want spring, great, summer, awesome, fall, we got you, winter, let's go. And we have multiple departures every single week. Your next question would be, well, which ships are best? All of our ships are about the same size. All of them have been fully refurbished since 2016 onwards. So there's no bad choice. There's a high degree of consistency across the board with these vessels. So just factor in what time you want to sail, reach out to the Cruise Norway team, and they can definitely secure you a solid quote. Something else to note about our classic route is basically it's your home sweet home. This is your stateroom, that is your bedroom. So when you sail with her Herpiduten, 
you really want to just factor in that your stateroom is your bedroom. It is not meant for you to spend an exorbitant amount of time. And if you do, I think we've sold you the wrong experience because the entire ship is built for your comfort. We have 180 degree panorama lounges. We have nice bars. We have fitness facilities. Why don't we offset that caloric intake from the amazing food that we're going to offer up? We have points of interest out on deck. So when you come back and you have 4,000 pictures, it's not going to be picture number 3,476. It'll be the image of that mountain where that Norse god proposed to that Norse goddess. Uh, we have a three-person coastal experience team. We will entertain you through education. We have a robust lecture program. Uh, and also, as you see here, I love this image of this gentleman just sitting out here taking in the northern lights from, from deck in the middle of the night. So we mentioned the culinary as well. We do have a few restaurant options on all of our classic ships. Torge is the main restaurant. That means marketplace in Norwegian. So this is where you'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The format will vary between uh, buffet and seated. And Houston is our a la carte restaurant. So here you might have a menu based on seaweed or kelp, reindeer, scallops. If you are a foodie, I should be piquing your interest right about now. Brigga is where I tend to live. It's uh, lots of comfort foods. It's bistro. It translates to wharf in Norwegian. But here's where you can get these traditional Nordic dishes, as well as salads and pizzas, other crowd pleasers. And finally, we have a massive sweet tooth in Norway. I feel like we keep all dentists in business because every week we have a saying called Lurdox Gott which is basically Saturday candy. And we the amount of candy, I don't even want to tell you how much sweets we actually eat. Uh, but here's where you can have the cakes, the waffles, pastries, something that is incredibly Norwegian called smurbrød. This is an open face sandwich. Um, that is something I've moved home from Norway many, many years ago, but smurbrød is part of my daily routine. Smoothies, coffees, also some ice creams that uh, will have some stories behind it. So that's just a little bit about the classic route. Loads of optional excursions to choose from. I bet you wouldn't associate a cruise with cross-country skiing, but we do have a cross-country skiing excursion in Trumsa. Dog sledding, snowmobiling, kayaking, hiking. Loads of activity levels, but when you're looking at excursions, important to remember this is an optional charge. This is not included. And you'll also want to take a gander at these levels and just, uh, you know, pick the excursions that are most suitable to your degree of mobility. And the Cruise Norway team, they've traveled these routes. They're so well versed on these excursions. So you're in great hands. Now, I really want to hone in on the North Cape Express because this is where we're making new history and we're covering the entirety of this Norwegian coastline, save for this little tiny bit. So we're not going to go up to Hirkenes, but we're going to go up to Holningsvog, which is the draw, jump off point for the North Cape. And this stint where we're making history is the first time we're sailing in and out of Oslo, which is the capital of Norway. And also worth noting that this will be operated by one ship, the MS Trollfjord, and she will have a different format than the classic route. That classic route with the 34 ports of call, we are contracted with the Norwegian government to be in port at very specific times. That is not the case with the North Cape Express, but we've taken all of those amazing elements of the classic route, the culinary, the education, the hiking, and we've put them into this program that will give you longer port stays. So you're gonna average uh, about six or seven hours in port on the North Cape Express. So the port stays, the shortest one I think is about three hours, longest is around 12 hours. So this opens the door for a lot more independent exploration uh, as well as, you know, just, just not having to rush. And if you are tuning in from North America, this would resonate more with what you might be used to from a traditional cruise experience. But we have definitely maintained our authentically Norwegian identity and arguably we've stepped it up. This one will have a much heavier focus on gastronomy as well. So the length, how is this gonna work? One departure will be out of Bergen here. It will go Bergen, Honningsvog, then it's gonna wrap all the way around to Oslo. The second one or the next departure rather will go out of Oslo. We'll go all the way up to Honningsvog, back down to Bergen. And there are land packages associated with each one. So something else to remember, generally speaking, the classic route always sold as cruise only, never really as a package. 
North Cape Express and Svalbard Express are generally sold as packages. And by that, I mean there's generally hotels built in and some select excursions, a.k.a. city tours. Now, your question might be, which route should I choose, Bidegan or Oslo? Well, that falls to you. I'm going to bounce that ball right back into your court. And if Oslo holds more appeal to you, keep in mind there's uh, two to three days in Oslo, depending on what season you book, same as Bidegan. And if you are uh, sensitive to dates, if you only have limited dates, well, then that's going to determine your port. If you cannot do the full 15 days, and you'll see I have 14 and 15 days. So if you're sailing between now and the end of April, it is a 15-day package. If you're sailing 24-25 season, it is a 14-day package. So that's just one day less uh, pre. Um, anything that is booked within 90 days of departure, the hotel nights go away. It, it reverts to cruise only. So it'll be a shorter trip. So just keep that in mind. If you're booking something close in within 90 days of departure, it will be a cruise only. Anything further out is a package. So I'm going to cover some of the ports. And this screenshot right here is of the 2023-2024 season, where we have built in two overnights here in Bidegan. And if you want to go out of Oslo, then that's then just flip the script in reverse. It'd be Oslo, 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 then it would go Farshin, Kristiansand, and then in reverse. But basically, you're coming over from North America anyways, or I, we might have some people tuning in from across the pond in Europe, because Cruise Norway is worldwide. But if you're coming out of North America, for example, it's going to be an overnight flight. You're going to build in that extra hotel night anyways. If you're going during winter, you definitely want to bank in that extra day. You want to acclimate to the time change. You want to allow for any delays. We have taken that legwork out of the equation for you. So that's just less things you need to deal with. Happy days. So let's go ahead and discuss some ports, but first I want to address the auroral zone. So this is a zone that refers to a region around Earth's magnetic poles, and this is where the auroras commonly occur. Located within the aurora oval, extends in a roughly oval-shaped belt, and the auroral zone is characterized by increased geomagnetic activity. It serves as a prime location for observing the captivating displays of northern lights. So, I'm in sales. Do not let me gaslight you people. Uh, so I am giving you homework on day one. I want you all to go check out the Aurora Oval. I want you to look up the Northern Lights forecast and I want you to look up the solar maximum. And then you will see Northern Norway falls squarely beneath that Aurora Oval. Fantastic place to see the Northern Lights. And we are predicting uh, a higher than normal activity for Northern Lights over the next couple of years. Iceland is great. Greenland is great. Canada, Alaska. But maybe you've gone to Iceland. Was it a cloudy night? Let me throw you another tagline why I think you should explore the auroras by ship. There's less light pollution from ship. It's a, lot, it's a lot darker hunting the lights from ship. Also, we act as a floating observatory. So that means we have the ability to sail past cloud cover. Your next question might be, when is the best time to see the Northern Lights? They occur year round. It's just we have uh, that midnight sun. So the sun doesn't set for months out of the year. So we don't see them. But the sun has once again set. Lady Aurora has once again returned to Norway a little bit early, but pay attention in the coming weeks it's going to blast off with northern lights and, and lady aurora will come out to dance for you so just keep in mind that northern norway is a great place to see the northern lights and then couple that with the culinary experience couple that with that authentically norwegian experience the educational program on board so we're not just northern lights but you get a massive bonus with us so just to discuss a couple of the ports we have Moldem, and if you are familiar with us with the classic route, we do call upon Moldem, but for a much shorter stay. So we're actually going to be here for the majority of the day from early morning to mid-afternoon. It's not as well known as, for example, Christian Sun would be, but it's no less impressive. And with Hürtgeruten, it's very important for us to show you the true Norway. We want you to experience Norway through the lens of a Norwegian. So that is why we handpick these ports. Molde happens to also be a safe haven in areas when it's a harsh winter day, 
We uh, will seek refuge in the Malta region here. Also, you have an old museum, Rumstall Museum. It was established in 1912. You have a 1957 Gothic style uh, Malta cathedral. Also along this route, if you are into architecture, you're gonna have the stories behind the different architectural designs. Uh, you might be used to the colorful row houses that you'll see in Bergen and Trondheim and other cities. That's not the case for Molde. They were heavily bombed during World War II. So when they rebuilt, they have clean lines and lack that. That's why they lack that typical old wooden house feel. So if you are into architecture, you're going to see all these different things. And hopefully you're also a history buff and you can learn about World War II in the process. Um, there's an optional excursion called the Atlantic Road, and this is a five mile stretch of road gives you the right uh, takes, takes you out to the ocean's edge and it was voted to be the engineering feat of the century in Norway, also commonly referred to as one of the most beautiful drives in the world. We're going to take you to hidden gems of Norway, specifically Lödingen, and you're going to learn about village life and the nature of the fjord. So why do you go to Norway? You want northern lights, tick. You want fjords, tick. And you want the authentic village life. And I specifically chose this picture because this could just as easily have been in my hometown of Landsvik, all the way to the snow poles here. And really, it's off the beaten path. And Lödingen also is near and dear to our hearts because we had this uh, port in an earlier iteration of the mail route that has evolved over the last 130 years. So only about 2,000 inhabitants live in this region. And also even coming in, you're passing two fjords. One is the Gullesfjord and one is the Andfjord. So you have the fjord element here. And even if we don't call out fjords um, in our itinerary, there's over 1,700 of them. There will be fjords, not to worry. Then you have Alta, capital of the Northern Lights. And if you're following along the map here, this falls right beneath that Aurora Oval I was telling you about. And this is a really good place to see the Northern Lights. And they also are home to the polar night. Fun fact, anywhere above the Arctic Circle, the sun will not rise for certain months out of the year. And conversely, in the summer, the sun will not set. So Alta is very well known for Northern Lights. It's also uh, known for being home to the Finnmarken race, which is a dog sledding race. They have an igloo hotel that you can visit, dog sledding optional excursions you can participate in. And we also have a Northern Lights Cathedral here. Alta is also known for Sami culture. So you can still hear Sami being spoken in the streets in this region. And you might learn about the origin of Northern Lights, particularly the Sami perception, which is that they perceived that the Northern Lights had supernatural power to end disputes. Others believe that the lights emanated from the souls of the dead and had to be treated with immense respect. This is an immersive experience. We're gonna take you through all of the storytelling, the lore, the legend. This will be a common theme all throughout your voyage. And of course, this is the norm. This is not the exception. Just look at any of the Instagram pages for her to We always mount these GoPros to our ships and we are sailing these fjords under the blanket of the Northern Lights. So you have ample opportunity to chase them. So then we're gonna go to the North Cape. This is the North Cape Express. And that means that we have to call upon Holningsvog. So we're gonna be here all day. This is a departure from that classic route, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The, the carte blanche, whatever you wanna do, explore independently. You can explore uh, North Cape and King Crab with us. You can take a four wheeler to the North Cape. Maybe go on a culture walk and have some beer tasting, uh, experience a local show at 71 degrees north. But in, just in case I have some adrenaline junkies tuning in here, we do have the optional excursion snowmobiling to the North Cape. So why not snowmobile under the blanket of the Northern Lights? This would be great during a polar night season, but loads of opportunities here to go chase those lights in a prime location. We'll also call upon Trumse, gateway of the Arctic. You'll learn about the polar history of this region. It's a huge provisioning stop for seafarers over the years and over the decades. So you'll learn about that. It's also Northern Norway's largest city, just shy of about 80,000 inhabitants. They used to have the northernmost brewery in the world, but I think Longyearbyen and Svalbard just came and knocked them off the pedestal. So sad to say that, but uh, one of the northernmost breweries uh, is here. 
And then there would be some dog sledding opportunities. Uh, we'll be here all day again, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. There's whale watching opportunities in this region. Uh, peak season for whale sightings in Norway would be October through January, in case you wanted to marry your love of northern lights and uh, whale sighting. So just keep that in mind as well. Dog sledding. And I want to give a shout out to my girl, Madi, who I know is tuning in. I told you she trained me back in 2016 and she took me on my very first Herpiduken cruise. So this is Rob Belsey, Madi and myself. We went to Thrumse, uh to go dog sledding. They had the puppy section, the active dog section. They had the retiree section. If you have rain pants, you might want to bring the rain pants because we definitely got peed on by the puppies. But it was a cute experience all around. Brunnesun, I'm back to the legend and the lore. So you're going to see this mountain and you're going to be like, well, why on earth is there a hole in the middle of the mountain? This is called Torikotten Mountain. And according to the legend of Helgeland Mountains, Torikotten was formed when this troll Hestemann and he was jilted in love. He shot an arrow attempting to kill the girl Lekamea who dared deny his advances. In comes the savior, Troll King of Mount Sumnafiele. He saw this action. He threw his hat in the path in an effort to save her. The arrow pierced the hat, formed the hole. The sun rose and everybody was turned to stone. Now, if that's not your cup of tea, that's okay. The other explanation is that this was formed during an ice age. So pick your story. There's a story either which way you're going to learn all about it. You can learn about legends of Torikotten, maybe participate in a nice winter walk in a mini concert in Brunnesun. Brunnesun is also known for ice cream. So just another shout out to our uh, sweet tooth there. Back to architecture, Olesund, early 1900s. They had a pretty nasty fire uh, that destroyed large swaths of the city. So when they rebuilt, they opted to rebuild an Art Nouveau style. So that's why you see a different architectural style here. And also this image was taken from a vantage vista point called Mount Akshla. It is 418 steps. So if you want to get your glute workout in, then go ahead and undertake that trek. We'll be here for about a half day. You can explore Olesund architecture and breweries, explore on foot, or maybe take a guided tour to Alnes from Olesund. And I will also say if you partake in uh, IPAs or if you're just an avid beer drinker, there's actually lots of breweries along the coast of Norway. It gets really dark in the winter, so uh, we do have to kind of supplement the lack of sun with either candy or beer. So there's that. Then we're going to make new history. So if you're following along the map, we have gone further south. So this is where, this is the new part, but it's still, we've done this on the expedition side. So it's not new, new, but it's the first time we've done this under the Hurtiruten Norway umbrella. So you will have the Hardangerfjord. If again, why do you want to come to Norway? You want to see our stunning fjords. Hardangerfjord is Norway's second longest fjord, clocking in at 111 miles long. It's the world's fifth longest fjord. You, if you have Instagram, I guarantee you, you've seen pictures of Trolltunga. There's lots of insane people that like to get married there. I am morbidly scared of heights. I will enjoy this from a distance. Another reason you might want to visit Norway, you might want to explore our rich Viking history. Haugesund is known to be home of the Viking kings. So maybe you want to take a Viking tour by bus as an optional excursion or experience, really connect with your inner Viking and get on a boat. Or if that's not your thing, we have art walks with local artists as well as e-bike tours along the coast of Haugesund. So once again, multiple um, activity levels and excursions for different preferences. So we have gone from the North Cape. We have gone all the way down to Farshund and Christian Sund. I do believe this is where Espen Fjermer was hails from, the owner of Cruise Norway. Um, they kind of sound like Danish people when they speak. But Kristiansand is Norway's fifth largest city. And the theme of today is arguably lighthouses, but also a flair of World War II history. Because you do have a German fortress in the Farshund region. And Kristiansand was home to the World War II Gestapo headquarters, which was the official secret police of Nazi Germany. 
And I also think it's worth noting that we were so heavily affected during World War II, our entire fleet was decimated. We lost over 700 lives. So it was given the top priority after World War II to rebuild the fleet. But also to pause to let you know that Norway still, all these years later, still bears the scars of World War II. So if you're following along my mouse here, uh, I grew up right along the Trondheimsfjord. And there's all kinds of, you know, abandoned German bunkers because this was a strategically important hold for Nazi Germany. So it's just, it's part of our history, but it's actually going back, you know, having moved here from Norway, looking back, it's actually kind of mind blowing how much history we just see day in and day out. Um, and if you were to ask me, Lynn, is it possible to go to the South Cape and North Cape in the same trip? And I did quiz my colleagues on this uh, in a fun corporate event not too long ago. The answer is yes, because you can go to the South Coast and the South Cape. If you want something merry, if you're going around Christmas time, there's a Christmas farm called Skrostad Farm here in the Kristiansand region. Also, if you go in the December time frame, you're going to see the Christmas markets all up and down the Norwegian coast. So I hope that inspires you for the North Cape Express. Again, we'll have the longer port stays. We'll have over 30 excursions to choose from here as well. Uh, make sure you are paying attention to that level one to four and that you're choosing the excursions that are right for you. Now, let me talk about the North Cape Express, the round trip classic voyages and the Northern Lights promise. So. Maybe you've gone to Iceland to see the Northern Lights. Maybe you didn't see them because it was a cloudy night. We have the original Northern Lights promise. That means if you're sailing any of the round trip voyages, that Bidegen Hirkenes Bidegen, Bidegen Hirkenes Trondheim, Bidegen Honningsvog Oslo or Oslo Honningsvog Bidegen. And there are no Northern Lights sightings between October and March you will get a free cruise on us, six or seven day classic voyage the next season. So that is as close to a guarantee that we can get, but I will reiterate if there are no occurrences, we're gonna make the announcements, but you need to get out of bed at two or three in the morning and you need to chase the lights. And you need to also just get comfortable with the fact we all look disheveled at three o'clock in the morning. I would say pack some interesting pajamas. I feel like some of the best friendships can be formed out on deck under the guise of Lady Aurora just dancing in the sky for you. But this is something that you should keep in mind with this Northern Lights promise because it really does Put your mind at ease. This is not, this is a bucket list trip. This is something you, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So why not hedge your bet a little bit and then take advantage of that free cruise if the Northern Lights don't appear. So that's it for Northern Lights. Let's set our sights on the other itinerary. We're not gonna go into the ports here, but I'll speak high level to it. The return of the Svalbard Express. And this is a really cool itinerary that we operate in the summer, spring and summer months between May and September. And I love that it encompasses the vast majority of Norway, but also the west coast of Svalbard. So if you have dealt with Cruise Norway before, maybe you've had expedition inquiries. Uh, Svalbard is primarily an expedition destination. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's not really much in the way of human infrastructure. So with expedition cruising, you're generally speaking zodiacing to shore. That is not the case with Svalbard because we found the two piers we do have in the Svalbard archipelago. One is in Longyearbyen and one is in New Orleans. So you will physically be walking off the ship, but it's a really cool itinerary nevertheless, because it also pays homage to a previous route that we had contracted with the government called the Sportsman Route. Between 1968 and 1982, we did have the mainland Norway plus Svalbard route and the North Cape Express and Svalbard Express, both itineraries were launched in conjunction with our 130th anniversary. So there is so much history in these routes. There's so much passion in these routes. This is also a great um, uh, expedition. I'm not expedition. I don't want to call this an expedition. This is a great voyage for birders. So you can get the, the puffins, the, the gannets. You can even see the Arctic terns that migrate all the way from Antarctica up to Svalbard, do they hitch a ride with some of our expedition ships repositioning? Perhaps, we don't know. 
Um, but anyways, the round trip would be 16 days. And again, keep in mind that 90 day rule that it's a package further out cruise only if we're within 90 days. So if you're looking for 24, it's going to be a package here now. 16 days, but again, Hunlingsvog, all the way up to New Orleans. Why not send a postcard to yourself from the world's northernmost post office? Then you would come back down by means of Tromsø, sail south to Bergen. Now, once again, if you just don't have that kind of vacation time, that is okay. We have a northbound 11-day version, Bergen, Hunlingsvog, Longyearbyen. And we've built in this crazy cool land package and something you need to know about Longyearbyen is that it's just a wildly interesting town. Expats from over 50 different countries live here. Uh, fun fact, you do not need a visa to live in Svalbard. So if Armageddon is upon us, not the worst idea to go to Svalbard because it also happens to be home to the Global Seed Vault where they're currently protecting over a million seeds uh, for dire circumstances, if you will. But you may not be born in Svalbard. You are not allowed to die in Svalbard either. So if you're pregnant, they're going to boot you off the archipelago at a certain point uh, because they, they don't have the modern uh, medical facilities, if you will. But really cool place. If you did the northbound, you would do Bergen, Honlingsvog, Longyearbyen, and you would have a uh, three-day land package afterwards. There is hybrid electric catamaran trips down fjords called the Billefjord. Takes you to a glacier called Nordenskjöldsbreen. You would have uh, a, a wilderness evening at Camp Barents. You would hang out with the, uh, the Svalbard reindeer. So again, just this wildly interesting place. And one of the northernmost settlements anywhere. Um, and if so, this would be great for someone who has a great interest in mainland Norway, but you're curious about the high Arctic, but you don't want to go on an expedition, then maybe do the northbound. If the high Arctic holds a larger appeal and you want to go to New Olesund, that's OK. Fly into Longyearbyen, spend the three day land package, then hop on the MS Trollfjord, sail up to New Olesund, then back down uh, to Bergen by means of Tromsø. So I've screenshotted just, you know, what the itinerary looks like. So also northbound versus southbound. You're going to want to look at which ports you want to visit. I can tell you right now, Trana, wildly interesting archipelago on the Arctic Circle, 33 nautical miles offshore, only 500 inhabitants. You can imagine how remote uh, we'll take you to Stokmarknes. That's where Hurtirut was born. We have a Hurtirut museum. Uh, Trumse, Senja, beautiful island. Svolvar, the beating heart of the Lofoten archipelago. So just if you have a moment, check out the itinerary, see what strikes your fancy and get a quotation from your Cruise Norway team. Uh, so I mentioned that the route will go from May through September. So we have to give a shout out to Vårfølelse or spring fever, the spring feeling, if you will. And I've told you, we have polar nights. We don't see the sun for months on end. When the sun returns, if you see us just flocking about like crazy Ouija's that we are, don't mind us. We've been cooped up in the dark for many, many months and we're just happy to see the spring return. If anything I've said strikes your fancy and you want to go in May, may I kindly suggest that you consider Sutnamai. May 17th is Norway's Constitution Day. You will see Norwegians in parades wearing traditional Norwegian garb. You will probably participate in these parades as you go along. You'll have Lapskos, you'll have Lefse, you'll have Lumpe, lots of Norwegian uh, traditional dishes, but this is a huge celebratory day all throughout the country. So whether that be on the classic route or whether that be on the Svalbard Express, I cannot say enough good things about May departures because you're really close to the midnight sun at that point as well. So then that brings me to the midnight sun, which is a dominating theme of the Svalbard Express. And this is a depiction from the North Cape where for months on end, the sun does not set. Are you an insomniac? No worries. We will hug the coast. You can just take in the beautiful landscapes at three o'clock in the morning. Fear not. We will have ample daylight for you. Uh, now, let's say, Lynn, I like this itinerary, but I also want the northern lights. Fear not. Maybe you would want to go in that last departure in September. I'm not going to guarantee anything. There's no northern lights promise, but my gut is telling me that once we get into mid-September, we're going to see some Northern Lights. So I think coming from Lynn Wilson's personal 
uh, preference, I think that September is a great time to get the best of all worlds. You have ample daylight hours. Are you a birder? Great. Chase the birds and get a smattering of northern lights, maybe against that dusky backdrop and not against the full darkness. So just a few things to keep in mind as you plan your next Norwegian adventure. Once again, we do have off-ship activities, over 30 to choose from. So reach out to Cruise Norway. They will definitely guide you with their um, preferences and their advice, level one through four. I cannot stress that enough. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the ship uh, that runs the Svalbard Express and the North Cape Express, MS Trollfjord. Recently refurbished in 2023, and she was built at Fulsenberg, which happened to be right across the fjord where I grew up. So I'm going to just pull the Sarah Palin tagline. I could see that ship from my house. And then again, the tagline here, just use the stateroom for your bedroom. The ship is entirely built for your comfort. It is meant for sleeping the rest of your days. You're going to be exploring towns. You're going to be participating in lectures. You're going to be participating in points of interest out on deck. This is Peter Jensen, Marty, and I sailed with him in 2016, and he just celebrated his 25th anniversary with her Tiruten. So you can imagine the degree of know-how we have within our coastal experience teams. The Trollfjord is more immersive, has a more immersive uh, onboard program. So the Svalbard Express and the North Cape Express also have the lecture program that you would have on the classic route, but we're going to have a five-person coastal experience team on the Trollfjord versus three people on the classic route. Uh, something else unique to Svalbard and uh, North Cape Express will be the cinema and movie nights. Photography tips, how to capture the northern lights, how to uh, photograph the bird life, the landscapes, maybe whales. Uh, so they will be there to help guide you. I just saw the cutest pictures the other day from painting at the North Cape. So handcraft and art classes, they'll do similar things on board. It's uh, when you sail with her to Norway, it is a quiet, tranquil, leisurely experience. Uh, a vacation with her to generally speaking, does not require a vacation from the vacation. So the two-story panorama lounge that the Trollfjord has, that's your living room. The multiple restaurants, the, those are your kitchens. The outdoor deck space, that's your walking space. So just treat this as your home away from home. And then when we talk about entertainment, that is the coastal experience team. And we're not talking entertainment. We're talking edutainment, which is better. We are going to entertain you through education. So the points of interest out on deck, I mentioned these, these random wonky lighthouses that pop up in the middle of the fjords. I mentioned Toidekot Mountain. Uh, there's no shortage of areas that carry this historical significance. And anytime we pass those, you will have the opportunity to come out on deck and learn about it. So, um, so basically, um, yeah, and we'll also procure hikes as well as they kind of go along. So that these are generally speaking bookable on board. So if you are a, an avid hiker, then you can go ahead and sign up for hikes on board as well. So then we have the Norway's Coastal Kitchen, and this is where the culinary element comes in. And I do want to say we do source 80% of our food locally. We have this Norway's Coastal Kitchen concept. We want to celebrate our local suppliers from the coast. We want you to not only see Norway, we want you to taste Norway. We have uh, uh, breweries that brew beer or IPA specifically for we have distilleries, Aurora Spirits near Tromsø. They make a uh, premium gin, premium occupant specifically for Hurtiruten. Maybe you've heard of Havet's Bobred, Bubbles of the Sea. We recently aged sparkling wine underwater in a fjord for six months because it was an environment that was quite conducive for aging. So when you sail with Hurtiruten, Every meal will have a story. Every drink has a story. Maybe it's berries infused or, you know, berries infused, berry infused cocktails from specific regions. So it is really an amazing culinary event as you go through. With the Trollfjord, a little bit more inclusive than the classic. So we have all day dining in Flura and Brasseri Aran for all guests. Um, and then also house beer and wine, as well as uh, select 
cocktails and spirits is included. So this is something that's new, is included across restaurants and in the 1893 bar. So Flura, she draws inspiration from the edible herbs, berries, mushrooms, flowers, fruits and veggies. Then you have uh, Brasiri Aran. That is our way of showing respect for the Sami people and everything that they've done for Norway. And Aran is a northern Sami word for the fire at the heart of Alavu, and that is a temporary dwelling used by the Sami people for thousands of years. Generally speaking, this is a place where you share stories. So that is the intent of Aran. We want you to share your stories at the end of an amazing day under the northern lights or the midnight sun, whatever season you choose to go. Finally, you have Rust, that is our a la carte fine dining restaurant included for sweet guests, optional charge for non-sweet guests. Um, this basically pays homage to the produce that helped establish Norway because we established one of those first known sea links between the southern and the northern regions. Um, a lot of you know export and the prosperity of the of the country can arguably be tied back to Herkirutten. Uh, and if we have any foodies tuning in today, so you could have salmon or reindeer, but again, those unexpected ingredients seaweed, kelp, arctic pearls, sea urchins. This should tickle your fancy here if you are a foodie and looking to try new things. It is true fjord de fork. And finally, we have this two-story panorama lounge and bar on decks eight, nine, and seven, and you can have select included cocktails and, of course, you know, a wide variety that would be an optional charge as well. But generally speaking, uh, the Svalbard Express and North Cape Express are more inclusive than the classic route. So let's discuss what is included before I introduce the amazing Cruise Norway team. Um, meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, that is across the board for any classic, any Svalbard Express, any North Cape Express. Uh, across the board, complimentary coffee and tea throughout, that is across the board. Uh, choice of cabin category, across the board. Choice of cabin number, all classic and round trip for Svalbard Express and North Cape Express. Complimentary Wi-Fi across the board. Uh, the Trollfjord is kitted out with Starlink internet, so it's actually quite good if we have any remote employees tuning in or digital nomads like our colleague Ash. Um, feel free to hop on ship and work from there for a little bit. Uh, Classic has a three-person coastal experience team, and the Svalbard Express, North Cape Express has a five-person coastal experience team, plus those extra amenities on board that I just discussed. I would implore you to check the specific itineraries for the included pre and post, as well as city tours. That is something the Cruise Norway team can help you with. The currency on board is Kroner, Nook. Uh, but Norway is largely a cash-free country, so you don't need to carry a ton of cash. Uh, they do accept all major credit cards. Uh, if you want some of the cash, it's beautiful currency. So if you wanted to take some out just to have as a souvenir. Um, and our kroner, has, they have holes in them. So if there's any grandparents tuning in, never a bad idea to grab that souvenir for those grandkids. Another FAQ, electricity, the two-pin continental European-style plug. So factor that in when you are uh, planning your adapter. And then luggage. So generally speaking, most of the beds have storage underneath them, additional storage near the reception if you need it. And the ship, once again, this is your base camp at sea. This is your home away from home. Laundry is self-service, 30 Norwegian kroner. Uh, so don't overpack. If we have any team carry-on people tuning in, I will be team carry-on myself doing two weeks in Norway in October. So that brings me to the amazing Cruise Norway America's team. So to the left here, you have Daniel Pliske. We are about to sail together to Norway in October. Most excited, we are going to connect with our inner Aurora chasers. You have, Ann, he's a former Hurtigruten employee. Anne Sinclair, also a former Hurtigruten, both in the reservations team as well as inside sales for the outside sales team. Uh, she is from Australia. So we have a few Aussies uh, in the Cruise Norway team. I worked very closely with Ash when I was at Cruise Norway. He was my Hurtigruten counterpart and we onboarded him during my uh, Cruise Norway tenure. Uh, so very, very, these are top producers, lots of in-house know-how. Then you have Danny Wolf. She has not come from inside her Hurtigruten, but she has sold her Hurtigruten extensively, and she is an absolute powerhouse on expedition as well. So uh, whatever you need, Norway expedition, the entire team, you can see here, these are all expedition photos. So they have, they have tested the destinations in advance. 
Then you have Matthew Gray. He was recently in Svalbard with his son. Uh, he used to work for Hurtidut in the UK. Sarah Ung is a newcomer. She is a rising star, already a Hurtidut whiz. Ivo Buchmann, he was part of Hurtidut before. He handles all things Germany. And of course, one of my best friends as well, Madi Pern, who trained me back in 2016, and we have just kept in touch all these years later. So she handles all the office admin as well as some groups formation. So just make sure you're reaching out to the team. If you go to www.cruisenorway.com, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a nifty little link that says about us. And that is where you'll pull up all of this information. Then we have Anna Tal. She trained me on expeditions back in 2016 and we sailed to Antarctica last year together. And then finally, we have Carlespen Fjermerus. We actually met during a phone call when I was with her Tiruten, and we immediately hit it off. And the rest is history. I just, I just popped on over to Cruise Norway and hung out there for a few years. So I really owe so much of my own success and expertise to the Cruise Norway team. So I'm really passionate about Cruise Norway. And I'm so, um, just bullish on their ability to help you uh, figure out your next adventure. So that is the Cruise Norway team. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. But before I let you go, there are offers. So if you're still with me, thank you so much. You are getting the first look at what is going on. This is not even public yet. So this offer does not go live until tomorrow. So this is what I need from you. I need you to go to www.cruisenorway.com. I need you to request pricing for Norway. And they stand ready, the entire team, to give you quotations. So starting tomorrow, save up to 40% off and get up to 10,000 Norwegian kroner OBC per cabin. So OBC is onboard credit, shipboard credit. This will be marketed as $1,000 shipboard credit. Granted, the, the amount will depend on which itinerary you choose. So the highest amount is gonna be off of that round trip Svalbard Express, and then about 5,000 kroner for select North Cape Express. And then if you do the half voyages, it should be about 2,500 kroner. As we discussed, we always have the Northern Lights promise that is evergreen. So anything longer than 11 days between October and March it, it, along the coast of Norway, if there are no occurrences of Northern Lights, then you are eligible to get that free cruise. If we have any solo traveler offers tuning in, I'm so passionate about solo travelers. Hurtiruten Norway and Hurtiruten Expeditions honestly have some of the best offers in the industry, generally speaking, combinable with other offers. So make sure you are telling our Cruise Norway team, give them your preferred destination, your budget, time frame. They will hunt the offers for you. If you have children or grandchildren, children travel up to 50% off with Hurtiruten. And also anyone who books between between now and September 14th with deposit, you will get an extra 800 Norwegian kroner per person shipboard credit as a webinar incentive. So thank you for tuning into the webinar. You already get up to 600 kroner by booking with uh, Cruise Norway through their member benefit, and you will have the shipboard credit under the existing offer. So that's going to alleviate a lot of that burden for excursions. Um, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Think secret deal that could only be unlocked by requesting a quotation from Cruise Norway. I will leave that to you. I shall not say anything further, but there could be extra deals that I am not at liberty to speak about. So I think that is about it for me. I know I ran a little bit over, so let me see if I can just spend the rest of the time addressing some of the questions. So we have one from Sigri. What is the best time of year to travel the coast? And um, that is that depends on what you're looking to experience. And that's actually something on the tall taught me. So if you want northern lights, uh, figure out what else you want. Do you want northern lights and, and fall foliage? Go September, October time frame. If you want the polar night and the Christmas markets and the whale sighting opportunities in Norway and northern lights, so that would be November through January. If you want the winter backs, you know, the, the winter landscapes, but increasing daylight hours, great time for photography, go February, March. If you want increasing daylight hours, but you're not really big on people, 
don't hesitate to go in May. We're so close to the 24 hour um, daylight by then. And April is just a special month that you would be able to sail from a full on spring characteristic in the south. But the winter still has a grip on the northern regions. So I think that I just have to bounce that question back to you. And I'll obviously ask anyone at Cruise Norway. They will tell you. Uh, let me see. The North Cape, so from Jill, the North Cape Express is cruise ship only, no cargo or revolving passengers. So the North Cape Express will not operate as a ferry, will not carry Norwegians from port to port. We will still continue to provision the uh, Norwegian communities with um, uh, cargo, but that's not something you will see. And we're not making stops at night. So for all intensive purposes, longer port stays, it's more intuitive for that North American client. Uh, any reindeer sledding excursions from Doreen? Um, I think reindeer sled. I know they have some. I don't know if we have any off the top of my head. Pin that question. Um, I will go in and do a deep dive with the excursions. And just so you all know, we will follow up with an email on the excursions here. Uh, I'm sorry, with all of your questions. So your questions will be answered. I know we have dog sledding. I just don't know off the top of my head if we have reindeer. Um, do we have tours and cruises to Greenland? Yes, we do. That falls under the Hurtudutten Expeditions brand, but you're in great hands. I think Anne Sinclair actually just did Greenland. Um, I have a question from Brian. Are these non-smoking cruises? There are dedicated areas where people can smoke, but primarily these are you know, limited in space. Um, let me see. Yudis, I have a question on what could be additional approximate expenses on board, eating activities additionally to the booking costs. So that will depend on the type. So if it's a classic voyage, then uh, all of your meals are included. But if you wanted alcoholic beverages, that would be additional. Plus anything off ship is an additional charge. Keep in mind the shipboard credit offer that starts tomorrow, though, that's going to alleviate a lot of those costs. Um, and then I will answer one last question. I use a walker. Can I cruise with you? Yes, you can. We have several accessible stateroom options and all of the ships that we sell in the North American market are, um, they have elevators. So you can absolutely use a walker. Just make sure you communicate any dietary uh, preferences or mobility of restrictions at the time of booking so that your Cruise Norway team can best assist you. Um, I see that we are one minute over. I have never been accused of being concise. So I do genuinely appreciate you guys all tuning in today. It has been an absolute pleasure returning to my amazing Cruise Norway family. I hope you found this to be inspirational. Um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We will be following up with any questions that we missed. So thank you again for tuning in and have a fantastic day, everyone.